former Sunbeam factory is now occupied by Torrington Bearings. The front of the factory is to the left of the church. Moorfield Works, who produced cars from 1899 to 1935. This shows the coachsmith shop of 1908, and you will note the arches in the same positions, of course, the roof structure and the outlets for the vents from the forges. The workshop is substantially stained even to the door at the far end. Oh, here we have a batch of Sunbeam Copeland aircraft engines. Oops. Now, um, we're standing about the spot it was taken. You can see the windows running along the back there. This is the upholstery shop of 1908, showing the, the hand cutting of the leather and the large amount of staff needed. Sunbeam Body Shop, 1908. The windows at the far end are identical. A feature here being the many cast iron stanchions used in the roof erection. Doing various types of Tura and saloon bodies, very labour intensive. This is the chassis erecting shop in 1908. This is the cast iron foundry showing the open moulds, maze of belt driven machinery. It would be a nightmare for the modern health and safety. Erectic shop of 1924, showing a line of 1440 chassis, together with one or two 2060s. I'd now like to introduce to those of you who don't know um, a very well-known gentleman uh, to those who hang around the Sunbeam Works, because he's regularly here, and to all members of the STD register. Mr Basil Wilding, whose father was the head of this department, the experimental department, and it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you Mr Basil Wilding and ask him to make a short speech and unveil the plaque. Thank you. Welcome back. Good afternoon to you all. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, uh, I'm sorry James Fack didn't arrange the better weather today. You had a wonderful day yesterday, but it's not too bad. But uh, next time. Uh, first of all, but before I pull the cord, uh, I'd like you all to give a round of applause to Torrington for the magnificent uh, visits we've had this afternoon. Normally when the STD come here, they generally just go through the front door and out through the back. But this time we tried to organise a proper visit and you've probably seen some of the old, well, all the old Sunbeam works, which are the nucleus of uh, this great combine. A uh, lot of these buildings that were on the, your maps uh, weren't on there uh, then. That is the old foundry buildings around here, you find a lot more. And in fact it would take you a, probably three quarters of an hour to walk around the plant as it was. Uh, Great thanks must be given to IMEX, of course, for all the work they've done on this. I've been with them for the last couple of years doing various jobs. And, uh, you, and when you go through the, actually through them to the studios, you will, you will see the results of some of that. And also at the end of the, this block is the 
uh, lift which used to take the racing cars from the top down to the bottom because they built all the racing cars except the land speed record cars of course on the uh, top floor the second floor also was a machine shop and the bottom floor was a steel store and uh, I have explained to Peter that this area at the back of me was the uh, Sunbeam Laboratories and I worked there in 1935 even when my father was in charge of the whole lot so it has given me great pleasure to unveil this plaque. Special thank you to Tom Wheatcroft, who isn't here, but very kindly allowed us uh, to bring this uh, racing car, which was actually uh, built in this building, uh, along today. Um, just before we close, I'd like to invite everybody present, please do come and have a walk through Sunbeam Studios, or the experimental department, whichever you prefer to call it. Um, we've made an effort to put some photographs on the walls around the building, and I'd like to make an appeal to all persons in the STD register, we're looking for more photographs. Uh, we're looking for good quality photographs or negatives uh, of cars and individuals who worked um, in the experimental department. Um, and we're specifically looking for any photographs of the Bluebird, the 350 of course, for those in the know in its Bluebird guise, um, with Sir Malcolm Campbell. We have none. The Plaque with text composed by Basil. My father worked from in, at Sunbeams from 1910 to 1935 in various positions and during the 20s was in total charge of experimental and racing departments. Malcolm Campbell standing by the car watching the mechanic Webster making adjustments. May Cunliffe taking delivery of her two litre Sunbeam racing car talking to Leo Cousins, sales manager. Leo Bouts who became a well-known car dealer and reached the grand old age of 93, died in 19, 1996. This shot shows the massive air brake on the silver bullet. Coatland's early attempt at streamlining. Reputed to be a sunbeam, well, we are not quite sure what it is. Can you help? Typical pit stop and refueling system in 1912. K Dunn at Daytona with a silver bullet, showing the beach in a reasonable condition for a change. The only photograph ever taken of the three Sunbeam racing cars, Tigress, Tiger and the Cub, ever taken together. The 350 horsepower Sunbeam racing car being assembled on the ground floor of the experimental department, probably due to the fact that it was too long for the lift. The famous uh, 1,000 horsepower Sunbeam car, the first car to reach over 200 miles per hour. This is the Campbell modified. 350 horsepower Sunbeam.
Collings is 20.9 at the junction of Upper Villiers Street and Sunbeam Street. A nostalgic parting shot. <laughs>